The following is a hoop ball presentation. What's up, Grizz Nation? I'm your host, David Williams. This is Hootball Grizz. Coming to you tonight with the post-game coverage after the Golden State game. Grizzlies win this game 110-102. to They improved to 7-16 and on the season. So glad they beat them this time. The Grizzlies seem like they took the night off in the first matchup against Golden State. This depleted Golden State roster. The Grizzlies should have handled them easily at home. But they were asleep at the wheel. The Warriors were already without Steph and Clay. We knew that going in. Steph got hurt well before that game. Knew that he wasn't going to be there. But D'Angelo Russell was already He was also, not already, he was also missing from that game. And the Grizzlies just didn't appear to take that game seriously. And they got beat at home by a team that came in on a losing streak. So they really, I feel like they had something to prove in this game tonight because with the pieces that Golden State is missing right now the rosters are pretty similar in the fact that they're they have a lot of young guys and so the the young guys for the Warriors have been seeing a lot of time Pascal Eric Pascal has been playing well they've been um, Glenn Robinson the third has been starting so the the rosters are, are pretty similar. The, the Grizzlies don't have as many veterans as the Warriors have, but talent wise they match up pretty well with the guys with the rosters the way that they are with Steph and Clay out. Grizzlies stepped it up tonight. Again, it was one ten, one oh two. Grizzlies improving to seven and sixteen. Let's hit up the box scores, guys. Jaron Jackson had a, another solid game. No foul trouble. I, I think he had four. Let me look here. He did indeed have, oh, Jaron had five. He had five fouls. So he was playing a little bit of foul trouble, but he played plenty of plenty of minutes. You know, the, the, he didn't foul out, and the fouls were not super early in the game where he had to go to the bench. But he had 16 points, three rebounds, two assists, a steal, and three blocks. And honest to goodness, he got robbed. The, the scorekeeper just... I don't know. I don't know what they watch. I feel like Jaron gets robbed of at least one block a game. He should have easily had four or five in this game. So he, his defensive presence early on in this game, Eric Pascal, a rookie that's been producing for the Golden State Warriors, Jaron blocked his shot. He only got credit for two of them, but he blocked his shot three times early in the game and just didn't let him get in rhythm. And it, it threw him off all night long. And so Jaron can uh, can affect the game. Jaron can be a game changer on both ends of the floor. When he's staying out of foul trouble, he's so dangerous. I, I love watching him play, watching him develop. Can't wait to see what he grows into. Lots of love for me for Jaron Jackson. JV was in foul trouble tonight. He, he put up 13, 10, and 4, but he fouled out. Dylan Brooks had a solid game. It's a seesaw with Dylan. You know, we get games where Dylan is good and he goes out there, he produces. We see the numbers. We see the stuff that we like from Dylan. And then we have games where he just disappears. Thankfully, tonight he showed up against this team that the Grizzlies should. This should be their second win against them this season, but only only the first one. But we'll take it. Dylan had 17 points, three rebounds, two assists, and two steals. Grayson Allen played well tonight as well. He actually had his best game of the season so far. Unfortunately, Grayson hurt his ankle again. He sprained his ankle. Don't know. I didn't hear any reports yet as to the severity where the sprain is located. It's a high ankle sprain. Obviously, that means he's probably going to miss a little more time than if it's if it's lower in the ankle. I don't know. We'll see. I hope he doesn't miss, miss much time because it seemed like he was a little rusty coming off of his first injury. And he just started to get it rolling over these last few games. He's been playing and, and shooting the ball well. He's been the three has been falling for him. But he had fifteen points on six of eight shooting from the field. Another good good game from him. And that's I was glad to see him get it going. He was getting a lot of hate and deservedly so. Grayson Allen's reputation is not great. He was uh he was a punk in college 
and he's done a couple punk things in the NBA. So he is a guy that's easy to hate, but I'm a fan of Grayson. I like him. I've, I've talked to him quite a few times at the games. He's always been super friendly. Not one of those guys that acts like they're too good to talk to you. And I'm, I understand guys have bad days. I'm not a kid. They don't have to talk to me. But Grayson's always been engaging anytime he's signing autographs or whatever, not just with me, but with all the fans. So it's, it's great to see it. Um, just hate that he, he left the game with his ankle. Hopefully we get good news and it's nothing nothing too bad. Uh, DeAnthony Melton, I talked a little bit about this in the preview show. I was worried about how much time he was going to see with Ja coming back. I didn't know the jaw was coming back tonight until earlier today when we done the pre-show yesterday i was not aware that jaw was coming back tonight so it can you know it surprised me a little bit but d'anthony melton checks in in the first quarter and i'm ecstatic man i'm pumped like let's go i'm glad that he's getting rewarded he has played well he deserves to be out there let's get him out there let's develop this kid Man, lockdown defender, been playing well. He's smart with the ball. He's a great rebounding guard. He can play the one or the two. Get him out Get him out there, get him some minutes. Glad to see that he was out there. He had seven points, four rebounds, three assists, two steals. He was three for six from the field in 17 minutes. Another solid game from him. Tyus had a solid game. He shot the ball decent tonight. He was two for three from the field, had five points, three rebounds, seven assists, a steal and a block. I'm glad that Tyus had a shot falling tonight. It's only three shots. It's a small amount, but Tyus is not going to shoot the ball much. I want his shots to fall. He takes care of the ball. He He's very, very good at taking care of the ball. His assist-to-turnover ratio is is great. I would guess it's probably one of the best in the league. I haven't checked that, so that may or may not be a fact. But I know that he doesn't turn the ball over a whole lot. Jay Crowder was on the struggle bus tonight. He, Man, he was definitely on. He was 1 for 6 from the field, 0 for 4 from 3, into the game with 2 points. <laughs> you're you're going to have you're going to have nights like that. You'll have nights where you couldn't throw a rock into the ocean. And it seemed like this was a night like that for Jay. So, you know, fortunately, everybody else was producing, didn't need Jay to step it up and really produce. He did have nine rebounds, an assist, and two steals. So he still contributed. And his veteran leadership, that's something that doesn't go on the stat sheet, but he has really embraced this role as a veteran leader with this young team. Man, I hope. I don't think it's likely, but I hope that he is still a Grizzly at the trade deadline. I have a feeling some teams will come knocking for him. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. The Grizzlies had lost five in a row against Golden State at Golden State going into this game. Brought home the win, breaks that streak, and then they also broke. They were on a three-game losing streak overall this season. So good win for the Grizzlies tonight against a team that, like I said, they should have – beat them earlier in the season. Ja Morant has got to be the front runner for rookie of the year. This is a Grizzlies podcast. Obviously I'm going to be biased, but if you take his name off of the stat sheet and you just look at the numbers and you look at what he does and you don't think he's the front runner for rookie of the year. I don't know what in the freaking heck you're looking at. He had 13 of his 26 points. I don't even think I gave his stat line tonight. Ja, he had 26 points, 7 assists, and a steal. He was 8 for 14 from the field, 3 for 5 from 3. Just phenomenal. He takes over games in the fourth quarter. Ja's a walking highlight reel. You're going to see plays from him on a nightly basis that gets you out of your seat. He had one of those tonight. He had a dunk, went right down the lane. Willie Cauley Stein knew better than to jump with him, and he just backed up and Ja threw down a two-handed jam that was electrifying. If that would have been at FedEx Forum, the place would have like the the crowd would have just blown the roof off. It was typical Ja. It, it 
phenomenal play, outstanding play, but you just come to expect it from him. It's what he does. He's one of those guys, when he has the ball in his hand, you expect something spectacular, and it can happen at any moment. He has that quick step where, boom, he rounds a corner, and he's throwing it down. He's in the top 10 in fourth quarter scoring in the NBA. Top 10. Not not just the Western Conference. Not in rookies. Not any of that. Top 10 in the NBA in fourth quarter scoring. He wants the ball in his hands when the game is on the line. And he produces. Smart with the ball. He can shoot it. The the Warriors kept going under screens tonight. He kept shooting the three, and he was knocking it down. If Ja turns that on, if he is knocking down the three when they're going under the screen on a consistent basis with the rest of his game, he can drive. He's not as big as Giannis, but his ability to go to the bucket is just as good as Giannis. And if his jump shot, it may already at this point be better than what Giannis has. Giannis has been working on it. Ja's a rookie. This league is in trouble. If Ja Morant can knock that three down at a regular basis and you can't just drop back whenever they're rolling a screen for him, well, how are you going to stop him? You better have a good defensive scheme if you're going to shut that down. One of the best drivers in the league already and you can fight me on that if you want to, but you're wrong if you disagree. He is, man, I, I can't even think of it. There, I don't know that there's a better word than phenomenal to describe Ja Morant. I am so glad when the Grizzlies got the number two overall pick in the draft lottery, I was so happy. Number one is nice. Zion Williamson, I think, is going to have a great NBA career. But I feel like a lot of his hype was just him being overrated. I did not, as a Grizzlies fan, want Zion Williamson in Memphis. If the Grizzlies would have got the number one overall pick, obviously, maybe I don't say that. No, I still say it. I, I said it before. Before we found out where the Grizzlies were falling, I don't think that Zion was the best player on his college team. I think R.J. Barrett was that guy. I knew Zion was going one. When the Grizzlies got their number drawn at two, I knew who I, like, I'm, the Grizzlies are taking Ja Morant. And I saw, saw him in college, saw the highlight reels and what he was doing, and I could not wait to start watching this kid play live. And he has not let me down not even close. He has been nothing short of electrifying. It's early in the season. I don't think that's going to change. He right now is running away with rookie of the year. There's other guys that are producing. There's other guys that are having good seasons. I'm not hating on any of those other guys. I'm not hating on either of the rookies. Both of the guys in Miami are playing well. Kendrick Nunn and Tyler Hero. Eric Pascal is playing well. Kobe White's had a pretty good run, P.J. Washington. I understand there's other rookies that are playing well. John Moran is on a bad team, and he's the guy. He's the guy. These other guys that are producing, Tyler Hero, Kendrick Nunn, they're not the guy down there. They don't have the pressure on them. They have Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler's got the ball in his hands. He's making the decisions. Those guys just have to be in their spots and knock down the shots. And I'm not hating on those guys because they are. They're getting to their spots and they're drilling it. They're they're putting up good numbers too. But you p- take either one of those guys out of that situation, I don't think they produce the way that Jai is. I don't think those guys have the skill set that Jai does. I want to see... Ja continue in the way that he is right now. I want to see like the, the trajectory of what Ja is going to be. It feels like an all time great. (laughs) It's so crazy to say that this early in his career, but man, if he keeps growing the way that he can already go to the bucket, he develops his jump shot. He is going to be unstoppable. He's already 
right there. He's right at that already. Give it some time. Give it some time and just watch. Watch this guy explode. As a as a fan of the Grizzlies, getting the number two overall pick, maybe you don't see that as winning the lottery, but they did. They, the Grizzlies got the best player in this draft class, and I'm not. I don't even think it's close right now. Not even a little bit close. The best player in this draft class is Ja Morant. Twenty six points, seven assists, two rebounds, and a steal. Fifty seven percent from the field, three for five from three. He only had two turnovers. Two. He had the ball in his hands all night long. He has two turnovers. A rookie running the team. He's the guy on the team, and he only has two turnovers. That has got to tell you something about his IQ. His basketball IQ is off the charts. And there's people saying that he needs to change his game because of the freak accident where he lands on a photographer and takes a knee to the back. It scared the crap out of me. I was like, I was expecting the worst whenever he was down and he didn't get up. I was scared out of my mind, but that it's a freak accident. It doesn't happen on a daily basis. Maybe the NBA looks at it, and makes some changes, gets those guys a little bit further back. But why in the world when, when a rookie comes up and he's producing at the level that Ja Moran is producing, why would you even suggest that he changes his game? Not makes adjustments to improve himself, but change the way that you're playing the game. That does not make sense to me. I, why? Why do you want him to change his... If he changes his game, is he going to be the same player? Is he going to be as fun to watch? Does he have the talent to change his name, his game and be completely different type of player? Maybe he does, but he's played this way his whole life, his whole life. Don't change it now, man. It got you to this point and you're doing great. Don't change it. And, and Ja, when, when they asked him about that, when the, the, the media asked him about the people saying that he needs to change his game, Ja's like, I don't even listen to them. I'm not changing my game. And I love that about him. I love that. He's like, I don't care. Injuries happen. It can happen at any time. Zion Williamson, his injury, the the first time when it happened at Duke, the stinking shoe broke down and he hurt his knee. What are the odds? How many times have you seen that happen? It doesn't, it's not a frequent thing. An injury can happen. John Wall is out this year. Injury can happen at any time. John Wall was recovering from surgery and then he hurts himself at home. Wasn't even doing any type of basketball, nothing. He hurt himself at home. John Morant could hurt himself at home just as easy as he can hurt himself on the basketball court. And if you're making, if this kid starts to second guess his instinct on the floor, man, that's begging, begging for trouble. Don't do a jaw. Do what you do. Fans of the game love watching you do what you're doing right now. Don't change a thing. Keep attacking. Keep being explosive. Give us lots of posters throughout your career. And we're going to keep going nuts when you do it. That's it. I just done the whole podcast. It was I, I gave you a little bit of the post game. It was 110-102 Grizzlies. Grizzlies are 7-16 and 16 on the season. A win for me that's big because I think the Grizzlies definitely should have beat them, beat the Warriors in the first game. So I was glad to see them go into Golden State and beat them with Draymond Green playing and D'Angelo Russell. So they had the you know their their best roster available as for the people that are going to play this season. Grizzlies went in and took care of business. Huge game from Ja Morant, rookie of the year, hundred percent. I don't want to hear your arguments for anybody else because they're invalid. And we'll end it there. That's all I've got for tonight's game. I'm going to hit you guys up one more time. Not just one more time. I'm going to do it every show until everybody that's listening to this show is is signed up. The Bruise Letter. It's hoop-ball.com. You go there. It's 10 seconds, guys. 10 seconds to sign it up. 
the leader here at Hoot Wall, Aaron Bruski, he writes this every week, comes out. He's covering all 30 teams, giving you a look. He's a Kings guy. He talks about the Kings. He talks about basketball, a little bit of everything, but he covers all 30 teams. If you're a basketball fan, if you're a fantasy basketball guy, check us out, hoop-ball.com. If you're listening to the podcast, you already know about the website. If you're not utilizing it, man, you're missing out. We have some great resources over here. The The Bruise Letter is 100% free. doesn't cost you a single thing. You go to the website, hoop-ball.com. You enter your email address. You get signed up. gets delivered to your email I've not finished reading the bruise letter yet from this week, but I'll get to it. I worked last night. I came home. I fell asleep reading it. I'm going to read it as soon as I finish getting this podcast posted. So check it out one more time. Hoop-ball.com. Sign up for the free newsletter. Appreciate your support, guys. You can The, the show, what helps us? Five-star reviews. Go to iTunes. Leave us a five-star review. Let us know what you like about the show. Get at me on Twitter. I'm at dwill2111. Sam is at SammyB1118. That's S-A-M-M-Y-B-1118. The show is at Hootball Grizz. Tweet at us, guys. We we love engaging in conversation. We'll talk about basketball or whatever you want to talk about. We, we, we can talk about anything. We just want to be interactive. We want to talk to you guys. We want to get you involved. That's all I've got. Thanks for listening. Until next time, go green. This has been a hoop ball presentation.